Badminton is a super fast sport where you need a lot of explosiveness, speed and quickness if you want to cover your court. Therefore, I think it is a good question to ask, how do I actually get faster and how can I move with more tempo? Speed itself has many different dimensions, so there are also many different answers to that. And in this video, I want to show you three ways how you can actually improve your tempo on court. And no matter if you're just starting out, if you're on an intermediate level or if you're already going up towards the pros. First of all, I want to start out right away with maybe the one that can have the biggest impact on your speed and that is your footwork technique on court. Many players are slow on court not so much because they are lacking power, but because the power that they are using goes into the wrong direction and they are not moving efficient on court. To help you understand the problem, I want to make a small excourse to physics and to the Newton law of action and reaction. That principle says if you create a force, there would always be a counter force going into the exact opposite direction. So for example, if I'm standing close to a wall and then pushing right into it, I'm creating a force into this direction here and there will automatically be a counter force that will push my body away from the wall. So if we want to transfer that to badminton, for example, if we want to move to the right in defense, then we have to push to the left or into the opposite direction that we can move to that side of the court. But if we are standing very narrow and push with one leg, that will only um, move our body upwards. So the counter force goes directly up and we will not be able to move towards the corner quickly. So that's why it's so important if you are doing a split step, if you're doing a starting movement, that you put your feet apart and you lower your center of gravity. So here you can see the huge difference of where the force goes to in the left and in the right picture. On one hand, I'm only accelerating my body upwards. On the other side, you can see that the force is much more going towards the direction where I want to go to. And in the end, I will be a lot faster, a lot quicker. You can see that with players with a narrow foot position, that they are always going up and down and up and down on court. That is very slow on one hand and also very inefficient. You need a lot of energy if you always have that up and down movement in your footwork. So mastering the split step and also getting the right foot position for your start is key. If you want to know more about that, I already made a full tutorial about the split step and starting movement in Batman. But there's also another situation where you have to be fast explosive and where that principle I just explained you is super important and that is when you land in a corner. After hitting the shuttle, you want to get out of the corner quickly and you want to recover fast so you're ready for the next one. And here again, it is important to have one leg that decelerate your movement so you can stop in the corner and accelerate out of it right away. So if you want to be able to do that, you need to have a foot far behind your center of gravity so you can stop your body and accelerate in the other direction. But many players tend to have their landing foot more under their body. So they are not able to stop. Sometimes they even need to do some extra steps after the landing and they cannot push out right of the corner. So here in the rear court, it is important to bring one back far behind your body to push out of the corner right away after your landing. In the front court, it is also important to make a lunge that allows you to push out of the corner as fast as you can. The bigger the angle of the knee, the easier it is to push out of the corner. So here you can see the angle in my leg is bigger than 90 degrees and that makes it a lot easier to push out. You can also try that out and feel it. The smaller the angle of the knee, the harder it will be to push out of the corner from those situations. Let's dive into the second way. And this is maybe the one you've been waiting for or that is the one that comes to mind first. It's about increasing power and speed, especially in your legs. First of all, I would always say, try to optimize your footwork technique like I was talking about in number one. So the power you develop and create with strength and power training also goes into the right direction. But now we want to have a look at how to actually get more power in the legs. On one hand, you can work on muscular endurance if you're doing a lot of reps. If you're getting into an area of six to 12 reps, you are working on hypertrophy. So by that, I mean increasing your muscle mass and getting bigger muscles. And everything under six reps usually will improve your maximum strength without increasing your muscle mass. In that rep range, 
we can differentiate between maximum strength training. So there you're using 80 to 100% of your maximum weight. So a really heavy load. With power training, you use less weight. So 60 to 80% of your maximum weight, but you try to do the exercises more explosive. With those training methods, we're not going to increase our muscle mass so dramatically, but we will get a lot better in activating all the muscle fibers we have and therefore get more power, get more strength without increasing the mass. This is really interesting for us because in Batman we have to change the direction all the time and the heavier we are and the more mass we have, the harder it gets to actually decelerate and change the direction, get back again. In my eyes, the most interesting number here is not the maximum strength, so how much weight you can, for example, lift with a squat or with a deadlift, but what is your relative strength? So you put the weight into relation with your body weight. Just imagine two players that can squat 100 kilograms but one of them is weighing 80 kilograms and the other one is weighing 60 kilograms. The lighter player will be able to move a lot faster because in relation to his body weight, he can move a lot more and he will probably be a lot more explosive and being able to change direction a lot faster. Besides the classic strength training, there's also something that can help you to increase your speed and that is plyometric training. You can basically say that plyometrics are small jumps with a very short and reactive landing. Those jumps will basically increase the stiffness of your tendons. And that may sound not what you actually want, getting more stiff, but that stiffness in the tendons will help you to transfer the power that you create with your muscles a lot faster to the ground. So it is a common way to also combine power training and plyometrics. So for example, you are doing um, squats with around 60% of your maximum weight, do them very explosively and afterwards do a short sprint or these rebound jumps that you can see here. You can also do it already in a very badminton specific way. So you do a drop jump from a small height and then right away into a fast footwork pattern like you can see here. Strength and power training needs a certain degree of experience. You need a proper technique for the exercises. So if you're new to it and if you want to dive into it, find yourself a coach that will help you and guide you through the different steps. But in the end, if you can work on that area, you will also feel that the power will increase and you will be able to move faster on court. Last but not least, the maybe most interesting way in improving your speed, and it has nothing to do with technique, it has nothing to do with actually becoming faster with the legs, but becoming faster with the head. And now I'm talking about anticipation skills and being faster with making decisions. In one of my former videos, I was already talking about the footwork of superstars and Lin Dan, the arguably greatest player of all times, there I was also analyzing him, um, had exceptional anticipation skills in my eyes. So if you were watching him, he was always in the right position with his feet he could read what the opponent was playing. He didn't have to correct his foot position many times. He was able to start earlier than most of his other opponents. The Badminton World Federation, BWF, also did a study on that topic. And interestingly, the findings show that anticipatory behavior is critical in badminton with an average of one to two shots per rally. If you want to get a better anticipation, I think there are two things you should consider and put into your training. I talked a little bit about it in the video about Lindan already, but on one hand, you should try in the training to read situations early and maybe try to guess where the opponent will play and or maybe some corners that he will not be able to play. So here, for example, you can see from that situation, it is very unlikely that my opponent will be able to play cross clear. So I already move forward to the right front court and wait for maybe a straight drop or being ready also for the cross drop. That only works if you're using exercises with flying shuttle. So if you're doing a lot of multi-shuttle feeding, you will probably not improve in that area. So it is crucial to put in exercises with flying shuttle and very open game-like exercises. The second thing is about reading the movement of the opponent. So especially if your opponent has a little bit more time in the rear court and has different options, you should try to analyze different aspects of his movement. So for example, how much tension does he have in his body? A lot of players tell you very early that they will play a smash or a hard shot, for example, if they are very tense when they go backwards. So this is maybe the first clue that you can get from the movement of your opponent. Other key points that you can focus on are, for example, the hip, 
the elbow, the shoulder and try to work on that in the training as well. If you want to practice stuff like that, I would start very basic with, for example, just playing high serves and then your opponent is allowed to play all kinds of shots or you can also limit it to two different shots maybe and you should try to read what he is doing. So he can play, for example, a straight smash or a cross drop and you should be um, able to get both shuttles as high as you can by anticipating and reading what is his movement like, what is different when he plays the cross shot compared to the straight shot. Is there a different body position, different tension, different kinds of rotation. Of course this is something that takes time and you will be also guessing wrong many many times but every time that you guess wrong that will bring you one step closer of getting better anticipation skills and you will see in the long run that will make a huge difference against opponents that are worse in that area. So even without being faster on your legs you will be a lot faster than your opponent when you can just start a little bit earlier and have the better foot position to start where the shuttle will go to. Alright, I will link you all the videos I mentioned in the description below and also some more additional infos. I think there is so much more to talk about when it comes to speed and being fast on courts. So if you want to know more about it or have wishes for further videos about speed, explosiveness, agility and quickness, um, let me know it in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you're not already following. And then I see you in the next video. Bye bye.